Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. My name is Tom and I'm a teacher of psychology. And on this channel, we explore the world of psychology so that we can better understand ourselves and others. This video on the biological approach is going to explore the genetic basis of behavior, the influence of biological structures on behavior, the influence of neurochemistry on behavior and evolution and behavior. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video where there'll be some questions that are designed to help you check your understanding of what we've covered in this video. Let's dive in. The biological approach to psychology assumes that behaviour can be explained using biological processes because humans are viewed as biological beings. So this brings us firstly to the genetic basis of behaviour. The reason why your eyes are the colour they are is a result of the information in your genes which were passed on to you from your parents. For the biological approach, the same idea applies to psychological characteristics. So things like intelligence, personality and mental illness are considered to be a biological and potentially passed on genetically. Genes are a part of a chromosome and contain DNA, the genetic information, that codes for physical and psychological features. Genes are inherited from parents. One of the ways that researchers can explore the role of genetics in behaviour is by studying twins. There are two main types of twin, monozygotic twins, mono meaning one, zygotic meaning egg. These are identical twins who are from one fertilised egg and therefore share 100% DNA. Then there are dizygotic twins, di meaning two. These are non-identical twins who are from two separate fertilised eggs and therefore share 50% DNA. In other words, monozygotic twins are more genetically similar than dizygotic. Fred, you next! He's not Fred, I am! Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. In twin study research, concordance rates are compared. Concordance rates are the degree of genetic similarity for a particular trait, for example, OCD. Now, if OCD is genetic, we should find a higher concordance rate for monozygotic twins than for dizygotic twins. In other words, if one twin has OCD, the likelihood that the other twin develops OCD should be higher for monozygotic twins than for dizygotic twins, which would suggest that OCD may have a genetic component to it. Now we come to two key concepts when talking about the role of genetics in human behavior, genotype and phenotype. Genotype refers to the particular set of genes that a person possesses, their genetic makeup, the information that is contained in their genes. Phenotype refers to the expression of the genotype and its interaction with the environment. For example, let's consider dementia. Some people may have a family history of dementia, and so this characteristic may have been inherited genetically from a parent. That would be the genotype, the genetic makeup of the individual. That information is there in their genes. The expression of this genetic information in their genes is the phenotype, and has the potential to show itself in the development of dementia. However, human behavior is rather complicated. So let's say because of your family history, you are a little concerned about your susceptibility to dementia, so you decide to go for a genetic test. This genetic test may reveal that you are more likely to develop dementia, but it will not reveal whether you will develop it in the future. Why not? Well, often the phenotype, the expression of the genotype, can be influenced by environmental factors. For example, research suggests that the development of dementia can be influenced by the food that you eat, with research pointing to the negative impacts of processed foods and the benefits of a mainly whole grain plant-based diet. Additionally, research has linked poor quality sleep to dementia because amyloid plaque builds up in the brain and hinders brain communication between neurons if the quality and amount of sleep is deprived. Another aspect of the biological approach considers the influence of the brain in behaviour. The outer surface of the brain is known as the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is divided up into two halves, known as hemispheres, with each hemisphere subdivided into different parts known as lobes. Each hemisphere and each lobe are thought to be responsible for different functions. This is referred to as localization of function, which is the theory that specific parts of the brain are responsible for specific functions. For example, the frontal lobe is thought to be involved in personality characteristics, decision making and movement. The motor area of the brain, responsible for controlling movement, is found towards the back of the frontal lobe. The somatosensory area, responsible for processing information from our senses, is in the parietal lobe. 
The visual area responsible for receiving and processing visual information is found in the occipital lobe, and the auditory area responsible for analysis of speech-related information is found in the temporal lobe. When it comes to the hemispheres, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, and the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. Language is thought to be focused on the left side of the brain. Then deeper in the brain there are many other structures, one of which is known as the hippocampus. This is thought to play a significant role in memory and learning. Each of these examples illustrates the biological approach's view of how brain structures influence behaviour. Following on from the influence of the brain on behaviour is the influence of neurochemistry on behaviour. Your nervous system is thought to contain somewhere around 100 billion neurons, with your brain containing approximately 80% of them. These nerve cells transmit signals electrically and chemically between one another. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that transmit or pass information between neurons. For the biological approach, the mind and the brain are the same, and so the chemical processes that are going on in the brain are behind what is going on in the mind. In other words, neurotransmitters influence our mental state. For example, research suggests that if there is an imbalance of these neurotransmitters in the brain, it can cause certain changes in behaviour, and in some cases, certain types of mental disorder. For example, an imbalance of serotonin in the brain has been associated with depression, and an imbalance of dopamine has been associated with schizophrenia. Evolution refers to the gradual change in inherited traits of a species over many generations through adaptation to the environment, natural selection and survival of the fittest. Those who possess the strongest genes will therefore survive and pass on their genes, but those who don't survive die, and therefore their weaker genes do not survive and are not passed on. This is known as survival of the fittest. Those who possess certain advantages because of their genetics are more likely to survive, and this process of selection naturally occurs. One example from psychology that is suggested to illustrate this is the rooting reflex, something covered in the attachment topic under Bowlby's monotropic theory. Babies will turn their heads towards anything that strokes or touches their cheek or mouth, which aids breastfeeding and hence survival. As the theory of evolution proposes that humans are descendants from other animals, the biological approach takes the view that it is possible to study human behaviour through studying animals. So now let's test your understanding of what we've covered about the biological approach. A question will appear with a few seconds for you to pause the video before the answer appears. Here we go. Question one. What is the difference between a genotype and a phenotype? Question two. Explain how researchers study twins to investigate the role of genetics in behavior. Question three. What are concordance rates? Question four, can you correctly label the lobes of the brain? Question five, the frontal lobe is thought to be responsible for? Question six, the occipital lobe is thought to be responsible for? Question seven, which side of the brain is thought to be dominant for language? Question eight, the hippocampus is thought to be involved in? Question nine, describe with two examples how neurochemicals may influence human behavior. Question 10, define what is meant by evolution and give an example. So now that you hopefully understand something of the biological approach, you're ready to critically consider its ideas. Check out this video that evaluates the biological approach up here, or for more on the other approaches in psychology, check out the playlist on the screen and linked in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.